go down, present the ball, but they're trying to keep the ball alive because they know when Cambridge are set, they're really hard to break down. So I think in the second half, you're going to see them trying to keep the ball alive even more so. Now, they also had a few moments, Oxford, where they didn't take the chance to get some points on the board. A couple of times where maybe they should have kicked it or maybe they could have kicked it. And, and you were kind of on the right page with them, actually, but they could have got the points on the board at the end of it. Yeah, I think they were trying to capitalise on their... They've got a couple of scrum penalties. Who knows why? I can't comment on that one. <laughs> None of but, us can. <laughs> <laughs> but they, I think they were moving towards the line five metres out and it spilled out the back, which they probably didn't intend to do. But off the back of that, I think they had the opportunity to probably keep it a bit tighter and just keep it in this area of the field and maybe wait for a mistake rather than forcing and that led to the error. Well, let's pick up on this in just a few moments' time because the atmosphere here inside the stadium is absolutely fantastic. A very nice crowd here. And let's have a quick look at some of them and see how much they're enjoying their afternoon. Well, the Oxford captain, Tom Osborne, was saying that they were going to bring a lot of energy to this match, Rachel. They certainly have done that. And Tom himself is one person that stood out for you. Yeah, I think he's just been, he's been all over the park. He's really stepped forward. You know, he talked about that energy at the start, and I think he's leading from the front. Obviously, their set piece is going really well, and he's one of the leaders in there, talking to the referee. Had a bit of a slow start with the ref, getting marched back 10, but I think he's really found himself into the game now, and he's often popping up off the nine, getting go forward. And, you know, that's what you want from a captain. That's what you need from your pack as well. For yourself, Damien, there are a couple of players that you picked up on that you wanted to kind of mention. The number eight for Cambridge, that's Christian Stalick, who looked pretty decent out there. Yeah, and he was making some big holes in that Oxford defence, yeah. as Tom was talking about early on. And you think that's really got to be the way that Cambridge try and move forward. But the back row has performed well against a very strong Oxford back row. But, but also Jamie Benson, I think, you know, he's shown some really deft touches there at fly half. And he's going to be absolutely seminal to Cambridge continuing the... Uh, that the march to glory. <laughs> you hope. He did the exact same thing last year, though, didn't he, Jamie Benson, as well? We had our eyes on him, and he didn't disappoint. So. Yeah, he's just a class act. And England under-20 player, a lot of people talk about him in sort of hushed tones in terms of what he can deliver on, on an even bigger stage. But it's all about the next 40 minutes of these teams. Absolutely. It's set up well for a very exciting second half, at the very, very least. For yourself, a couple of players that you've uh, you picked up on, really, Tom. That's Sam Reynolds at 15. Yeah, he, he's been unreal and he's doing the business going forward in an attack for Oxford. But I think going on into the second half, a key thing for Oxford if they're going to stay in this game is their back row. Can they match the Cambridge back row? The likes of Jack Glover, who's a, who's a quality player, following the footsteps of his older brothers who I've played with, um, and Van Dalsen as well. Those guys are going to have to really step up if they're going to maintain the physical battle and maybe get into Jamie Benson a little bit and throw yeah. him off his game as well. That's the way it goes. And I played with uh, I played with Jack's father. So, <laughs> so, so there you have it. <laughs> well, it was black and white, as you've said before. We know. Don't we? Now, inside the, the, the change rooms right now, obviously conversations going. They're picking up points on each other. From your point of view, Rachel, what are they saying? What are each team saying? Let's start with Cambridge. Well, I think, you know, how they start this second half is going to be everything. So applying the pressure on the restart, trying to get the ball back, but not trying to overplay it, not trying. You've got 40 minutes. It's a tight game. I think if you allow the emotion to take over, then that's when those errors creep in, poor decisions will happen, ill discipline. So I think they'll want to try and remain calm just at the start of the half, just to get themselves settled back into it. Well, discipline-wise, Cambridge have managed to keep 15 on the park, which is great to see because last year they lost the player after 20 minutes. So, you know, on that side of things, it's looking quite good for the Cambridge side at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and discipline's going to be absolutely crucial in the second half because you see when, when Oxford get into broken field situations with the dangerous back three they've got, the back row going well, feeding off them, they, they can really cut loose. And that's got to be something Cambridge have to be quite clinical in their kicking and territory and possession. One thing you mentioned while we were watching that was just the size difference between Cambridge and Oxford, the power and the strength that the Cambridge side seem to have over Oxford. Yeah, it looks like they're just a more physical team just when we're watching them line up from the, from the stands. And that can play against you or for you if you're able to utilise it well. But I think the key thing is the discipline. When it's tight, it plays into that mental game of 
actually, we really want to win this, but can we maintain control of ourselves or get these arousal levels just right coming out for the second half so they can make good decisions? When you won it 30 years ago by that whopping seven-point margin, huge. that your absolutely huge <laughs> seven-point margin, can you remember the half-time nerves? I think at this stage now, and particularly based on today, it was a very close game yeah. when we played, and actually you, you've got this sort of emotion out of your system. You're, you know, we were lucky, we were playing in front of a huge capacity crowd here at Twickenham, so that's sort of fallen away, and it's just about really sticking to your plan, making sure you know how you're going to play, and, and just have confidence that you're here to do a job and come out and do that. So, Tom, who do you think's the happier side at the moment at Tenor? I think to some degree the Oxford boys might be, maybe not the players, but people involved with Oxford will be surprised that it's as tight as it is, perhaps. I think Cambridge will reflect on it and be disappointed, but they'll recognise that they had one decent attack and they scored from it. So, they get more ball in the second half, we could see more tries from them. And so far today, Rachel, we've retreated to two pretty decent games of rugby. Yeah, we've been really spoiled so far and we've got another half to come. And if it's anything like last year's second half, we're going to be in for a real treat. I'm going to... It's a pretty obvious question I'm going to ask both of you and I know which way you're going to answer it. So now I'll come to you at the end, Rachel, because they're non-partisan, I suppose. Damien, who's going to win this one? Well, I think Cambridge will grind down a victory now. I think they've seen what they're up against and they'll know... They've got the sort of... We talked about the experience and the tactical now. They know where they have to play in this second half. So. Unsurprisingly, I'm going for a light blue victory. I thought you might. Tom, which way are you I'm going? I'm hopeful for an underdog story. <laughs> I'm hopeful that the enthusiasm and the keenness will sort of keep the fire burning for Oxford. And, the, and they'll keep playing this great high-tempo rugby because it's brilliant to watch. Rachel? Well, I think, I think the boys have spoken about the discipline that will come down to. And I, I think we're going to see Cambridge, sadly, on that wrong side of that, making poor decisions. And I think Oxford could come through. There you go. Well, we're going to find out what happens because you're going to run away in a second, I think, yeah. so, because Rachel's about to head up to Coventry once again. And before she does, I hand back up to Simon Ward then for the second half. Well, the weather is showing fair. The sun has stayed out. And certainly we've seen some rugby to match the weather. It has been very interesting contest between these two and will be very interesting to now to see how the tactics change what James Shanahan has said to his big Cambridge pack about how he wants them to try and get into the game. Be interesting to see the impact of that man num number 22 as well because uh, Tommaso Castello is into the mix for Max Loveridge in the Cambridge midfield. The Italian international, there he is with 18 caps for the Azzurri, now gets his first varsity cap. It'll be interesting to see how he plays into the mix and whether that changes anything at all in the way that Cambridge will run. So, nothing between these two after 40 minutes. And the mistake from Jack Glover immediately giving Cambridge opportunity of points. Oh, interesting that Cambridge not opting for points off the tee immediately. Glover unable to take that cleanly. In fact, it was George Hobbs, I beg his pardon. And now they're into defensive mode as Ben Gompels finds his target, Byron Hodge, but they're shunted back. That's good discipline work. The work of Nick Civetta, very obvious there in the Oxford line out, and I think they've turned this over. Well, there you go. catching there, the heavier time. Cambridge Thank pack you. out time and time again now. Let's go now, now. And uh, seeding the attacking opportunity inside the opposition 22, inside the first 90 seconds of this second half. Harry Bridgewater, just 19 years of age. Along with Vasco Faria there. There we go. Doing a good job thus far. Gompels with another line out. 
came straight to the middle. On your feet, eh? On Christian your feet! Stelic. Now, this is the sort of area where you expect the Cambridge pack to make some headway. But right now, they're being disrupted and destroyed by their opposite numbers. They're little battles, but they're being won by those in dark blue. And you see Tom Osborne celebrating and congratulating his teammates. Just opportunities there for a driving maul from those in light blue. And they didn't set up, they didn't establish. And as a consequence, they've lost the feed to this scrum. A scrum in which, again, I reiterate, they have a six kilo, kilo per man advantage. Five. So Vasco Ferreira will be looking Set. for a very quick put in and escape, you would think. There it is. Pass not particularly helpful to Furness, but it's still there for the dark blues. George Hobbs. Push. No. There's your back foot, look. Nine, let's go. With the whole droid underneath it, but well, good attempt from Muse. There's Vasco Faria, an actor. He actually, was actually offered an HBO contract to go to America and turned it down to go to Oxford University. He's called, <laughs> James Wade calls him Davy Jones because he thinks he's going to be a UK actor that goes to the American take by storm. You don't know who Davy Jones is, do you? No idea. Do you remember the monkeys? No. Nope. Right, <laughs> that ages me then. <laughs> There will be some people out there that are nodding. Yeah, <laughs> two of my cameraman friends know who they are. So, uh, yes. Bye. It's an interesting option from the Oxford number nine. Far side. In fact, <laughs> too much weight. It's a penalty. It's well, a second problems one. For the You're going clearly Oxford through. props. And when you realise the two props are 323 kilos between the two of them, Opposite then, Peters and Lawrence Marwood, 353 kilos. So a 30 kilo advantage, numbers one and three. Yeah, and it's a second warning for them as well. Big opportunity now for Cambridge to really set themselves into this second half. Before the engagement. Cambridge working their way into the Oxford 22. Grant Pauls and Hodge work together once again. Now this is the driving ball set up. The advantage call is there for the light blues. Moved out by Holdroyd. Quick to move it out again. Out on the width is Ty Wills, gets the ball back to Benson. Benson sliding through one. Has he got it down? Yes, he has. Benson gets his second try. That's determination from the young Cambridge fly half and a fair bit of power to boot. And within five minutes of this second half, the light blues have pushed themselves back in front. Well, that's a marking of such a good play up. Not really any space to work with, but still manages to find half an inch through two defenders and then the power to get over. It's all about the speed of ball. Really great set piece from the line out. Got them go forward, got them on the front foot. Then the advantage comes and every single back lights up when they hear that because that's a free ball and a free opportunity. Like his first try. Shifts the ball early, then stays back alive, gets it on the inside, bounces back out again. He's so busy in the back line, not just being a distributor, but being a disruptor the whole time. Joe James in good position on that far side to make the call and help Jack make peace. <coughs> Benson. Unable to add the extras on this occasion. 
I think the question was, was he able to manage to ground it? We had so many Oxford hands. Just hold the restart, please, Jack. Say again. Hold the restart. Uh, hold the restart. Hang on. Now, I'm not quite sure why the officials are holding, because they... It's all right, Jack. Go ahead. Try's good. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, we'll play on now. Well, I think the officials are now happy. So, light blue lead. Seven minutes into the second half. Caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Back on the floor. Not clean taking from the Cambridge pack. Matt Simmons looks on grudgingly as he heads back to his defensive line doing his exec MBA at Queen's College. Now, has that gone too far? Yeah, it has. Yeah. There's a mistake that Oxford really couldn't afford to make. That's so frustrating, isn't it? You do all the good work, to get the turnover, and then just overcook the kick, which could have put you into a prime position. Okay, so, so this, isn't really, this isn't really time to do it. Right, stop. So it's not against you, but this guy's clearly pulling, going through. He's the only person moving, so let's just get on with it. We'd love to scrum. Michael Fanker's inexperience fair, mate, maybe just, just coming to, to the floor there. It, I'll get the ball in. Yeah, well, he is new to the game, isn't he? And it is a challenging position to be able to get right the technicalities, the detail, the combinations of everybody else around you. Crouch! From Medway Rugby Club. I am so pleased you brought that in because I'd be crucified if we didn't mention Medway Rugby Club. The Kent boy. You can't Providing withdraw all the great either, props. so let's go again. So Sean Brown. He's still put, it's not a free kick because he's still still putting weight through, but he can't stand up, so let's go again. Frank has got his work cut out coping with the 130 kilos of Angus Peters on this near side. This is where your, technique your and really the technical obvious, nature of the engagement is so critical. And referee Jack Makepeace is right on top of it. The watch manager at Knott's Fire and Rescue in Doncaster keeping a steamy Five. eye on this. Set! Good work from Fanker there. The ball though back into the Cambridge midfield oh and Thomas Castello with his first touch of the ball and Harry Bridgewater the youngster just gives the uh, experienced oh, Italian better, international the uh, congratulations shake of the head yeah actually it was a lovely play ball came spilling out but the lovely little delayed timing out the back great line on the inside see Muse there completely bought into the short runner could have just gone to hand. Would have been exciting to see what would have happened down this left-hand side. Well, some of those at Grange Road have been putting Thomas Castle in the subs line on previous games. Of course, Thomas Castello in the Italian. That's uh, an important Set. addition for James Shanahan to have that sort of experience on the bench. Advantage. Again, Mews looking for action, looking for the ball, changing the angle of the line. Ball's going to beat everybody, I think. Well, I think Benson overreacting when Mews tried to help him back up. I'm not sure what Benson thought was going on there, but as far as I could see, Thomas Mews was trying to help him back up. I've not seen anything yet. Looking at that. Anything more than what we've already got. Okay. No, he tries to help him up and then he pushes him. <laughs> yep. Pardon? Not, not after. We've had about four scrums. Complete overreaction from the fly off. Right, yeah, he's completely misread that situation. You don't often see Benson in those kind of situations. Yeah, yeah, 
Right, interesting change this early from James Shanahan and Ross McMillan because they're replacing both their props. That's Danny Collins and Connor Fairman coming in. Fairman has been starting regularly at Tidehead this year, so maybe not so much surprised to see the number 18 in there, but bringing the 17 on with half an hour still to go. Well, interesting to see how that affects things. You just wonder, that penalty was just given for the set piece earlier. You just wonder, are they running out a little bit of steam? Crouch! Bring some fresh bodies on, see what they can do. Five. Can they lift the tempo? Yes, yes, yes. Set! Yeah, advantage. Good work from the Oxford pack once again. Free ball if they want it. Bridgewater, a little dab over the top. Go back for the earlier call. Next one goes. The loose head's, the loose head's already been compromised, so either side or sorry, both sides are now on a warning again. Loose head's not straight. Well, you yeah. can't say it's the same yeah, loose head the because it's loose Danny not Collins straight, and not Angus Peters. But okay. I don't know whether that counts in the referee's no. mind. There's the yeah. light blue props. But yeah, good decision to go for the scrum again. Probably just overheard the referee. Next one, someone will be in the bin. It's just important that they try and hold this pressure now. Just absorb it. They allow the ball to get to the eight quickly. Then the nine's likely to play away. And then they're not going to come under all that pressure and distress and potentially give away another penalty and see somebody in the bin. It is an ascendancy that everybody thought before the, before the game Cambridge were going to be able to utilize up front but in reality in the 53 minutes we've seen thus far it's been pretty much parity yeah exactly that and I think even even probably Oxford has had the advantage over them we saw that early scrum where Cambridge turned them over but ever since then we've seen Oxford come out on top and the dominance in their set piece. And, and we set. talked about weight being one thing, but the technical detail is more important yeah, than just the weight. Again, the penalty goes Dark Blue's way. Bridgewater has no room to manoeuvre, and this is going to be a card. I think it's going to be Danny Collins. He's only just come on the park. Panker celebrating his right, success. Well, it is a, a balance, a change in the equation that we weren't expecting to see, I have to say. It's a, a problem for Cambridge now without their loose head, so presumably Angus Peters has to come back on if they call for another scrum. Going for the line-out option first off. When I've, when I've refereed it that way, I don't need the help of the other players, so OK. Tonight. The loose and honestly on the setup is already on the angle. He's, he's literally not in the scrum, he's facing them yeah, on the Interesting yeah. decision honestly, to go yeah, for the line yeah, yeah. considering how dominant the scrums have been. I, I sort of can't referee anything like it. it's not Back even a row for Cambridge, point really mobile, really strong, potentially could have would have had to swap one of those off to bring the prop back on. Opportunity Peter. here for the dark blues, but the overthrow is not gonna give them any opportunity to maximise it. No. And Cambridge scramble round in position to affect the exit. Holdroyd. Nine. Knew that he was going to get pounced upon. Muse is waiting though. We saw what Muse was about in the first half. He will go looking for rabbit holes if he can find them. Has that slippery running quality he's down actually got down injured on that last run but Oxford continue Johnson just on the edge of that 22 now the break is there O'Sullivan looks inside but the ball ricochets away tackle off the ball tackle off the ball is going to give another penalty penalty to Oxford it Tackle seems to be racking up like it. it was against 
Oxford in that first half. Muse is down. That's Thomas Muse down oh, to the yeah. left of your picture. Yeah, he's in the contact of the after receiving the high ball. He got tackled by three tackled players player from three different injuries. Good desperation from Cambridge, but tired bodies, a man down, you start doing desperate things with desperate measures, the clock, and then you end up infringing and okay, giving away yeah. penalties. Will be the extra clock, please. I'll tell you who's coming off while we've got time off soon. Yeah, Matt Simmons just hanging the around there, waiting to see what's going to happen. There's the tackle. In fact, it was from Tom Malloy. Tackling blind yeah. as he was 11. there. So 11 Oxford. I think that's quite tough. 11 Oxford. Someone's coming, running directly at your line. Doesn't interfere with the play out the back. 11 George Fowler is warming up for the Dark Blues on this near side. Who are Cambridge taking off? I'm quite sure. 11's going off. 11, you're off. Yeah, it is going to be for Thomas Muse. Bit Wait, of confusion there. Oxford. Muse is happy to continue. George Fowler isn't a winger. Yeah, you can see the coach right. is just waving his hand, saying no, no changes. Yeah. Nine. Nine. So that's Angus Peters back in the mix, and Sam Odu, the left winger, has gone off for the send bin. What's the 15 metre line? They're going to put Charles Laval on now, so Holdroyd's day is done, okay. I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah just in to comes the number 21 oh, for the light through. blues. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Starting oh, nine in the last the two varsity matches gets some action and what action it's going to be over the next 24 minutes or so. Because Cambridge may be leading on the scoreboard, but it is a tenuous lead at the moment. And this, these next few phases of play could be very indicative as to the outcome of this one. Yeah, they've been under pressure for the last 10 minutes, but it's just how can Oxford Fight. convert this pressure into some points? It's good enough. There's nothing wrong with that. Another penalty. Scrum again. Keep them tied in. The thing is, it doesn't seem to matter who's in the Cambridge front row, whether it's Angus Peters or Danny Collins, but they're being pinged on a fairly regular basis by referee Makepeace right now. Yeah, ideally, you want to see the referee play advantage so the backs get an opportunity to only run against five backs in the back line with plenty of space to play with. Bind! Set! Advantage. Now it's out for Packer. Who said? No. Yet again. Surely there's got to be another card coming here, you would Luce think. Luce now on a separate warning again. Luce said on a second warning. That's Angus Peters with, with one foot on the naughty boy's steps. Separate warning for him means everybody has got to get this absolutely right in the light blue eight right now. Yeah, he just saw Matt Simon just coming in there, pulling his pack in, using all of his own experience. Just giving a couple of words to the front row. All they've got to focus on is holding their body weight, staying square. Crouch! Set. Faria waiting out. for the ball to come. There it drive. is. Finesse in his first receiver. Good hit coming in there from Christian Stelic. Osborne. Holds out. George Hobbs bashing at the Cambridge door. But Oxford have been moved away from the 22. Well, 
the Oxford, uh, the Cambridge defence doing its job there and getting the advantage. And now they can draw breath. Yeah, well, that's a huge turnaround. Talked about just being square in the scrum and just really good discipline defensively, connecting really well, knowing they've got a player down, but the tackles coming in, which then get them on the back foot and then just force that offload, force that pass into touch because they've got less time to be able to accurately get it to his winger. Advantage. Well, further relief for the light blues. And Ten, one thing's go. for sure, Cambridge will not <laughs> look to rush this. Ten. Still just under five minutes left on the sin bin. Yeah, again, they'll just try and run some of that clock down. But our game nowadays, the referees are instructed to make sure we keep moving. So just giving Benson the instructions, let's hurry up. New half-back pairing and new midfield pairing, Castello with the break. Good strength from the Azuri International. Favell looking to keep things moving as quickly as possible. Benson bouncing off one tackle. Tackle! Strong leg drive into the 22. But he's been stripped, or has he? Come on! Oh, well, that's poor decision-making, poor discipline, especially when you're in this position of the field, knowing exactly where your trial line's going to be. Now he's just giving them a free opportunity to either go for three points or go right to the corner. Your go. captain, you're 15-10 up and you've got 20 minutes left. What are you Five. doing from there? Is that, do you agree with that call? I 100% agree with that call. When you've got the experience of Simons in there, 100%, they've just earned a penalty on the right-hand side of the pitch, which actually got them into that position from the line-out, so it's a great call. Into the final quarter of this year's varsity match. A big play here for Cambridge. Oh, Hodge. Gompels comes round to secure Five's legal. but again He's legal. the mall gets disrupted once now, now they in. find forward gear crabbing towards the line they're heading out though Gompels is in the middle of it there's no way that he's going to be able to get that ball down turnover Five meter, five meter line out. It's in this in touch. See, when you've got a tight Finish points game like this and you're a man down, I would have thought the three points to get you two scores ahead of the opposition would psychologically be a big tick in the Let's box, go. no? Yeah, I mean, you know, if they scored then you'd have been saying great decision. Well, it's it one would, of yeah. those things. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it was um, the number five O'Sullivan that managed to get through and disrupt it. Good hit coming in from Sean Ingle. Come down. Yeah, look at him. The adrenaline is surging right now. Yeah, well, it's big uh, pressure I'll points, you know isn't it, for both teams someone. at the moment? I don't think they were expecting that to come out as quickly as it did. And then caught off guard by the onslaught from Take Cambridge. Down. They may not have had possession, but it's all about turning those points of pressure, applying as much as possible, making it as hard and challenging for Oxford to get out of their own 22. This is going to be really, really important. They've obviously had trouble times defensively on their set piece. Whether they can control themselves in this position. Set! So, a big scrum for the light blue. Still, it goes blind. Castello trying to get through that tackle of Sam Reynolds. Park Leonard, no way through there. They line up again. Fairman, just a minute left in that sin bin for Cambridge, but they've still got eight forwards on there, so they're unlikely to spin wide without their left winger. Park Leonard. 
Simmons rebuffed and repelled. Now the drive is there. Is Engel over? No, I don't think he is. Off you go, you handle it in the ruck. Another yellow card. Handling in the ruck. Who's leaving the pitch? I think it's Ed Blake, is it? Well, we're 14 against 14 now. Lovely little dummy. No. Is if he's looking kick. to utilise this pressure now. Stelic turned turtle. Has he got the ball down? I think Claire Hodnett's going to be brought into action here. Yes, she is. Um, I've got that on the line, so it's an on-field try. Just want to make sure he's not dropped it in the process of getting there. The on-field call is a on try. On-field decision try, checking Stelic. whether he's dropped it. Yeah. Let's just have a look now. Over the line. Got it there still. Your call, Rach. He doesn't lose control at all. It's just whether he does actually ground it or if there's hands underneath it would have been the questions, but that's not what the referee has asked the TMO. See there. Still got the ball. Can't see him lose possession there, I'm just looking at one other angle. Bear with me. I can't see that there's any pictures that can go against that from those. Oh, oh, yeah, yes. knock it on, Jack. You need to overturn your on field CSI decision. CSI Twickenham comes right. to the fore. Okay. Really good work there, oh, no. just being patient around looking at the clips, checking one more angle. That's brilliant work from Oxford, just the desperation around the breakdown, losing a man. Cambridge going quick, reacting as quickly as possible, and then forces the error. So you've right. got scrum. scrum this you've time to restart. Oxford, but without Owen O'Sullivan in the engine left. room. They're just going to have to rejig now. Yeah, yeah, no. Whether Von Dalsen is, of course, Let's used go. to playing in the second row, played there last year in this contest. Yeah, look, he's going to step up into that position. Will they go with an eight or not? I think Furness is opposite, offering to step up, which will allow Jack Glover to move in one. Bind. 14 Set. against 14. Quarter of an hour left. Advantage. Penalty for the Dark Blues. Big moment for them. Uh, that's huge and really critical. A time when you needed to turn it on. And relieve some pressure and get out of this area. And he just needs to make sure he makes touch. Jim Viala's coming back on smooth. Or not, play up. Hasn't found <laughs> touch. A little offload from Benson yep. doesn't allow the flow to continue. Cambridge just about to go back to full strength now. Yep. So back on comes Danny Collins and Sam Duke. Angus yeah. Peters bids adieu. Yeah. So we're back to 15 against 14, but with the Oxford put into this scrum and Liam Furness once again stepping up to flank. The scrum, Glover in at eight, former Crouch. Newcastle University man, former Quinns Academy. Bye. Everybody's former Quinns, aren't they? Or current Quinns? That's right, Glove. How <laughs> big is this squad? It's on the mark, use it all reset. Faria is going to lose it in a minute. Tom Johnson once First again player. offering to come in, but the ball has gone loose. Stelic sets it back. There's his flanker, Stephen Clark Leonard, first player to lead light blues on three occasions. John Carter, of course, did it for the dark blues. Cavell. 
You sense Cambridge trying to up the ante a bit. Get the speed. Gets the ball. Oh, great work from George Hobbs. Good dexterity from the blind side. Release him! Ball's out again. Reynolds steps up, finds space, forcing Ty Wills back. And puts good, good effort through the ball there. All just a little bit frenetic, a little bit frantic from both sides now. Yeah, well, they can both feel the tension, can't they? Just great little tips it up, manages to regather. Good job because he could have been in a bit of bother if he didn't. But then just a bit of a scrappy time around the breakdown. Just again, both teams desperate to get over the ball, look after. And this is a smart little kick, try and turn them. No. Knowing that because Take Cambridge had the ball, off. that there would be nobody Thank in the you. backfield, but they recovered really well. Let's go. Time on boxy. <laughs> Osborne comes round the corner with intent. Reynolds has to go looking as he's been wont to do through this game. Really been a busy performance from the Oxford fullback. Cambridge coming through and breaking things down. Benson uh, slides it off the outside of his boot and they will go back. A mistake from the young man in that pivotal role. Toby Flood on this near side just looks on helpless. Yeah, what can you do, he says. That's the pressure that comes on in the varsity. Yeah, he was just caught in between two minds, whether to run or to kick and then Put the boot, boot on the outside of his shoe. Yeah. Three. Three. Change in the Oxford front row brings Noah Zenius into the fray. There he is. Former product of Mill Hill School, not that far from here. And on the other side. We're going to see Ben Mills and Fergus Hughes into the Cambridge forward effort. Good performance from Michael Fanker. Just his 11th game as a tight head. That's quite a performance. It's definitely hurting his team a number of penalties today. It's early. You early. He's in the air, mate, honestly. Well, the penalty count, I don't know what it is, but it's certainly high yeah. for both sides now. Uh, spoons, how long's left on the bin for? Captain! That's Cambridge's 19th penalty, I'm Second. assured. And Oxford with nine, so they've not hit double figures yet. But it does seem to have been, uh, particularly in the second half, a prominent feature of the game. Harrison Scoble, blue number 1,293. And when you consider the latest women's blue was 404, that gives you a, an indication of the difference in no. the evolution of the two games, as strong as it is for both. Scoble in the vanguard of that driving ball. Freya out to Furness. Sean Ingle just derails him and they break down in the contact. Good work from Fergus Hughes. I'm not sure why they brought that out of the back of the mall. It was going forward. Referee hadn't said use it. And all you do is send in your centre to a loaded defence, ready to pounce over the ball. Yeah. 
Stephen Clark Leonard taking over the captaincy now of Cambridge, a job he's done many a time before. Yeah, you've got three players all around him. I think it's Hughes that gets over on the ball. You've got 10 minutes left on the clock, Rachel Burford. You are captain of one of these teams. Is it more of the same, or have you got to change no, gears we'll now and now. find Even something now. different, particularly if you're in the Oxford ranks? Definitely if you're in the Oxford ranks. You've got to try and be able to be more go forward, more aggressive to try and shorten them up. At the moment, Cambridge aren't even competing at the breakdown. They're picking their moments and they've got all numbers on the feet. So you've got to try and create something. But for Cambridge, you want to just be start to manage in this game, play in the right areas. Your discipline is so key. So be having a word with players, no 50-50s, no trying to go as close to the line as you can with the referee. Not forgetting, of course, Oxford are a man down. They've got about a minute left on that particular clock. No. That is out. That is definitely out. Favell hangs one high. Reynolds and Johnson almost getting in each other's way. Von Dalsen loses the ball in the contact. Castello, good hands. Suddenly, Cambridge have got some width on it. Out it goes to Tim Andrew. But yeah. Running to the try line without the ball as it floated into his grasp. And the moment is gone. Yeah, he just took his eye off the ball ever so slightly, thinking about what he was going to do once the ball was in his hands. Rule 101, get the ball in your hands first. Could have been a really pivotal moment, but great cover defence. No, no, Four or five Oxford players all screaming across, which actually is what gets in the eye line of the winger. And he just takes his eye off it because they're coming across. Vasco Ferreira, who's had a very, very creditable varsity no, yeah. debut, on, replaced on, by 22 Zander Jackman. Another Australian into the varsity mix. There's the release, and they did really well to get it going. Uh, well, it wasn't the easiest of balls to take in. I'll take back what I said about Tim Andrews' mullet. He's had a haircut this week. <laughs> Still blonde-ish. Bind! Set! Jackman. Uh, finally, finally, the pressure from that big Cambridge pack pays dividends and at a critical time too and surely but surely Stephen Clark Leonard has got a point at the post yeah yeah what are you doing the, given the time and the clock you want to run the clock a little bit further down now it becomes outside of a scoring Stop. opportunity so Oxford will also will need a converted try and something else if Benson can take this kick but yeah, what a turnaround in the scrum. Just wonder if the 10 minutes on the bench actually brought him a bit more energy. <laughs> 10 minutes rest and then come on and do a job when it was needed. It's because a clock in the stadium for that. So, a big opportunity for Jamie Benson. A chance to push his team two scores in front. That is a perfect kick, but it's bounced off both posts. Well, you, you did it on two separate occasions last year. He's done it off one kick this year. That is incredible. Maybe it's an inside joke. Every time he gets that opportunity, goes for the crossbar. Well, he's going to keep no, no. the tension up through the last Let's five go. minutes of this one, that's for sure. Nine. It looked to be a, a sweet kick, a sweet strike. Well, Benson takes that cleanly. Tackle! Fergus Hughes. Falls that. Well, oh, 
Castillo running hard Reins and out. direct. Clearly picked up. Good work. I couldn't see who that was that get through. I think it was Jack Glover. Jack Glover coming through on Favell. And the indecision just coming in again. And Stephen Clark Leonard trying to defuse it. But the chat coming nice. through and the players must the realise Jack Makepeace has been so. tight on it all the way through this game. Yeah, it's silly things, yeah, petty things, just slapping the ball out of the hand. Oh, Benton can't believe it. Inches of going through the post and then just ricochets off. But desperation again from Oxford. They aren't giving up, playing right to every moment, every inch. And then they just pounce on the nine, brought on the hot defence. And then the infringement came. Now, this is a real big moment for Oxford. They've had a lot of opportunities in this same position. It's whether or not they can learn from how it didn't work the last time and bring it alive now. So, more substitutes coming on, trying to make a difference to their team's cause in these last four minutes. Oh, interception. Knocked on. But He's just taken it and knocked, knocked on. on. Oh, the ball. That almost, was so it. close. Almost, but not quite for Vincent. Oh, inches in it. Great pick out from Benson, but if that did go to hand and it got into the hands of Furness, you would have been on the outside of Benson. Playing so flat to the line. Great read. If you go for those, you've, they've got to be 100% because you can be really punished for them. Well, it was a valid attempt. I don't think there's any question about that, is there? Much as the crowd are reacting to the pictures on the big screen. No, that was definitely an attempt for, to Crouch. kick the ball, not slap it down. Five. Set. Nine. No, no, play away now. Back. Oxford scrambling inside the Cambridge 22 now. Reynolds out to the try score and Muse still on the part and looking to make a difference with another critical score. Nazenios. Jack Statham. Light blue line stretched out Move! across the 22. Everybody back in position. It's now about communication and concentration from Cambridge. The rainbow pass doesn't have a pot of gold on the end of it for Thomas Mews. Ball's still there for Oxford, but they're back a further 10 metres. No, no, he's picked up. <laughs> Good line speed, particularly from these Cambridge forwards. Bridgewater. Just looking for a bit of direct thrust to make some headway towards the try line very lateral at the moment and that's the pressure of the Cambridge defence Parker and that might be the opportunity gone really good defence from Cambridge staying on side staying connected as a group getting their fold right working hard getting off the line in the end it's a fumble in the tackle trying to get it offload oh it's actually a slap down from Cambridge I wonder if the referees pick that up that's a big moment I think Thomas Muse is not going to be able to finish this one off the winner struggled through but really doesn't seem to have 
any extra movement. It's going to bring James Lloyd Williams into it. Time and up. that will force a change, of course, in the back line. Who's coming out? Looking to see. Tom Johnson is on the left wing as before. It looks like they're just going to cover with Harry Parker right now. Maybe it's uh, Jack Glover, I think, going into the outside centre role. He's on the left of your picture. Set. We're heading to last chance saloon right now. Have Oxford got ice in their veins? Good work from Bridgewater. No! Cambridge well staying solid, staying solid, staying firm, focused. Well, that's an awkward pass for Furness to take. That really opened up his no, ribcage for anybody no. to make the target. And I think there's turnover as a consequence. Yeah. The ball's there. The ball's going out. The trophy is going to Cambridge. They've done it. It was tight and tense all the way through. It certainly wasn't the way that many people predicted in terms of the team sheets. Huge, huge credit to Oxford for what they put into this game. It really has been a momentous varsity match. There's our player of the match, Jamie Benson, will receive the Alistair Hignall medal after the game. But those in light blue, elated on and off the pitch that once again they have got the hands on the trophy back-to-back -back wins for oxford have come to an end and now yeah the two quinn's teammates console and congratulate each other osborne and benson with very different emotions going on right now it was tough, it was tense, it went to the wire. But in the end, Benson sends the ball to Twickenham Town Centre and sends Cambridge into raptures with a final score that reads Cambridge University 15, Oxford University 10. Well, Rachel Burford alongside me, Simon Ward, we have seen two very different games of rugby in this, today's varsity. That was not what I was expecting from the men's version, I have to say. Yeah, well, it was very much about set-piece, dominance and discipline in this game. You know, both teams turned up and played extremely well, which is often what makes it really challenging to play with some attacking wide, like moving it into the wide channel. So. It did became a dominance game around the set piece, around possession and territory. And you know, what a, what a story for Cambridge. The hurt of last year, the suffering from there, and they've turned that around and won a really, really tight victory. And at any point in those last closing moments, Oxford could have won it. They could have scored and converted and taken that victory. So it was a brilliant contest between both teams. And just a solitary score after half, half time at 10 all, I was expecting, I don't know why, the game to break open a bit and the width to come on it, but it never really tra transmitted that way, did it? It didn't, it, it, there, was, there was caution there, understandable caution in such a tight game. Yeah, well, that first half, it was very much tit for tat, wasn't it? The, the one team would score, then the other team would score, and then a penalty and a penalty. And, you know, one half actually allows you to work out the opposition. So then suddenly you start to suss them and then actually your game plan can adapt to, to try and nullify any of their threats or opportunities that they may have. And, you know, both teams worked each other out. Both teams had incredible moments and both teams showed incredible resilience around the discipline, times that they were under huge amounts of pressure. And very, at very little stages did that pressure crack.
you know, it often turned into a turnover or a penalty. And, you know, that's huge credit to both teams to battle it out for 80 minutes. And, you know, in the final moment, still could have gone either way. Says a lot about the hard work and effort that both teams have put in. And ultimately, 46 young men, well, some a bit younger than others, maybe, can be very proud of what they've achieved. James Shanahan talking to his Cambridge group. He will be delighted to get that victory. He will know what his team have been through. Similarly, James Wade knew that they were the underdogs coming into this. But my goodness me, they have put so much into this contest this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. I think for Oxford coming in as underdogs, they definitely didn't play like that. You know, they played with real heart, spirit. They fought for everything. They were exciting at times. Reynolds was really good in the backfield. The lovely try for Muse. You know, there was plenty of promise, which is actually a really exciting place to be in. And I think for Cambridge, you know, the fact that they didn't allow that to wear, just to lose that opportunity to win this game today, they could have let it slip, but they started really strong and they ended really strong. And that's something they'll be really proud of. Well, let's get down pitch side and hear from both camps with our reporter, Bryn Lucas. Tom, on the lead up to this game, you were saying that you expected your team to have all the energy and you had a lot of energy. Was it too much too soon? I don't think too much energy was a problem. Uh, in fact, I thought we played some awesome rugby. I just think, look, they've got some brilliant players. You know, line out defence led by Matt Simmons. We struggled at them all. Uh, they have Benson at the back there, always dangerous. So to be honest, I knew it was going to be tight and I, I can't actually fault too much from our boys. It was a very cagey affair. It didn't open up like perhaps we were expecting it to there. And if you look back, I suppose you think, well, you did have the opportunities with the kicks to maybe uh, get in with the penalties, but you didn't opt to kick. What was the reasoning there? Look, I think uh, we had a man down from the scrum and we've always wanted to throw the ball around. Unfortunately, it didn't come off today, but that was our game plan from the start. Like you say at the start, before you even came into this game, it was going to be a tricky one. They had more experience on the park as well, but I think you should be pretty proud of your team. Look, I'm awesomely proud of my guys. And look, you know, there were times when we were defending, it could have been many points against us. There were also times where we could have scored. So sometimes the game doesn't go your way, but I'm just so proud of the boys. Well done. It's a shame that you have to go away losing, but somebody does. But on this occasion, it just wasn't your day. Look, it's so special to play a place like this and at a university like this. So, look, I'm pretty lucky, mate. And I've got a great bunch of mates in this team. I'm pretty happy. Top place. Thanks very much, Jess. Tom Osborne defeated but not deflated. A great performance. And I think we're going to hear a lot more about that young man. As I say, he starts with Quinns on a new two-year contract shortly. And... Uh, going to be very interesting to see how, how he goes along with a, a number of his teammates this afternoon who've got so near to getting what was in many ways an unexpected victory James Wade with the experience that he's had in his 12th varsity will know just the right words to console that lot Sam Reynolds what a game the fullback had worked so so hard particularly in that first half the camaraderie the brotherhood that is within these groups very evident already right let's get some more reaction pitch side with Bryn Bryn well Ben last year it really wasn't Cambridge's year with the sending off and all the rest of it that went alongside putting a valiant fight last time round today it was a much more cagey affair yeah 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 we I mean from the from the get-go it was just a it was a hell of a battle it was I wouldn't say it's an advertisement for English rugby, but we stuck in there and boys worked really hard, especially front five. What was the key for you guys? Was it the determination? Was it uh, something else that maybe we couldn't even see from the outside? They always say, you know, attack wins games and defence wins championships. Mm. I mean, it's not a championship, but we stuck at it today, I think. Oxford, to be fair to them, you know, they kept coming, kept coming around the corner and we just, some of the shots from the boys going at the end just to get the go forward and, and get it in. Really good, really proud of the guys. Absolutely. And for yourself, you know, winning your first blue as well and being the captain here at Twickenham and walking away with the trophy? Yeah, well, I don't know. You don't, you don't try to think about it too much. Um, you know, you're incredibly lucky to run out here at Twickenham and, and, and you know, to uh, go to, you know, Oxford or Cambridge. And, you yeah, know, it's been a fantastic year for, for everyone here and to cap it off. And, you know, you're still kind of slapping yourselves thinking I'm here. But, you know, it's uh, lots of friends and family to thank. And I think a lot of the boys have, you know, getting them here. What's the emotion, not just for you, but for the entire team at this moment? I think after last year, you know, the first 10, uh, we had boys going down and, 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 and we lost a lot of leaders. And then coming in this year, just to, everyone stayed on the pitch. You know, well, we got a yellow, but we, we hang on in there. And uh, I just couldn't be proud of the lads. They're really good. 
Well, it's been a few years since Cambridge have won it, but congratulations, you've done it. Yeah, we've done it, yeah. And I tell you, the boys will enjoy it tonight, that's for sure. Anyway, go and get your trophy, well done. Thanks very much. I think think that's the guaranteed cert that the boys are going to enjoy it tonight. But you want to you want to talk about the commitment that some of these boys have to put in in order to be out there. Ben Gompels is a doctor of medicine, so he balances work at Addenbrooke's Hospital with doing a master's in surgical sciences at Lucy Cavendish College and getting ready to play a varsity match. That is just breathtaking, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, it, sh it just shows when you're prepared to go to those kind of lengths to, to prepare and to commit to, to a group of men. You know, they've all got their own challenges within that, but it just shows how much varsity means to them. It shows how much it means to be part of the club, to, to go above and beyond the early mornings, the late nights. Um, yeah, it's just it sucks. It manages to, you know, bring it alive. When you go home with a trophy, it really kind of shows that it's all worth it in the end. And they are going to enjoy themselves, and deservedly so. Captain's orders, I think that uh, was at the end. Absolutely. Don't think there'll be much buffalo going on tonight, but we shall wait and see. Well, Cambridge won 15-10. Jamie Benson scored all 15 points. And as our player of the match now, he is down with Bryn Lucas. Bryn? Yeah, he certainly is a player of the match. But before we uh, hand over the nice medal, tell me why, Damien, tell me why you chose, uh, chose Jamie. Well, Jamie's had an outstanding game. He led, he directed the game very, very well. Second half was tighter and he managed to bag all the points. So it was an extraordinary performance and thoroughly deserving of the Alistair Hignall medal. Pass the medal over and then we'll get a word from Jamie himself. Shake hands, go on, do the shaky hand thing. There you are, lovely. Jamie, if you step forward for a second here, Last year we saw we saw glimpses of you. This year I think we got to see the full Benson package almost. Yeah, yeah. Last year was very difficult. Um, it's been a long old year. It's been hard work for the boys, but it's fucking it's very special to come out here and win. Well, I apologise for the language. Obviously heightened emotion, that sort of thing. What does it mean as a general for the team then to win this after 2019, it being the last time? Hey, look, I think my role is my role. Everyone else has their role. Um, scored all the points, but it's absolutely a team performance. Couldn't have done it without the boys out there. I've got a proud dad standing to the side of you as well. Congratulations, Jamie. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Well, one light blue to another light blue, and you can see why Quinns are grooming him to be Marcus Smith's understudy over the road. He has something about him. He has has a quality to him, and even when under pressure, he, he's, he's a bit special, isn't he? Yeah, he is, and I think you, that's always tell him when, when a player's looks like they've got so much time on the ball to think move readapt that's and, uh, the key and that he had so much of that today you know he was finding spaces when there weren't any he was creating space for others and you know even his backfield space his kicking ability you know, as damien said he did really take control and drive his team around the pitch today and thoroughly deserves man of the match so the presentation's beginning to take place Rob Hardwin, the Vice President of the RFU, with Mr. Marcus Rule and Mr. Reg Clark from Rhino, receiving their appreciation and their medals. And up come the Dark Blues. What a performance they put in this afternoon. Run Cambridge so, so close with a relatively young, inexperienced team doing everything they could and more. Tom Osborne, as he said in our interview, mighty, mighty proud of his guys this afternoon. As understandably sad as they are at the moment, when they reflect on what they've achieved and what they did this afternoon, well, there will be plenty of pride coming through. Some of them, it's their first varsity of many, particularly the halfbacks, Bridgewater and Ferrer, played very, very mature games in many ways. Others, well, it may well be adieu to the varsity for them. Here come the light blues. disappointment of course of last year when Oxford dominated that first half 21 nil 
Cambridge losing their captain, Stephen Clark Leonard, after just 10 minutes, along with the second row. And then coming back with such character, such personality, to win the second half 17 nil wasn't quite enough. But they were seemingly able to build on that momentum. I know it sounds ridiculous, 12 months, 12 months on, but they really, really did show so well. Those tankards will be christened, I'm sure, later on in some style. The light blue flag flutters proudly over Twickenham. Those at Grange Road and beyond will be celebrating right now. If they're not here already, it's been a while. Now they can relax. Now they can enjoy what they've achieved. Ben Gompels stepping up to receive the trophy. He hasn't got there yet, so just looking to see if Toby floods on his way up. Can't see Toby, but no, Toby's down pitch side. So Gompels, the stand-in captain, leading his team from the front, confirming that the winners of the 2023 varsity match here at Twickenham are Cambridge University. Stephen Clark Leonard alongside him, long time captain it seems of this light blue side, earning his sixth blue, probably his last blue as well, but celebrating with victory. It's win number 65 in this contest. Oxford stay on 62. All the hard work of the last two terms comes to fruition for those in light blue. Another page in the history books of the Varsity has a light blue tinge to it. As players, young and old, alumni, postgrads, undergrads, friends, family, teammates, tutors, they can all now relax and celebrate and enjoy the moment with all the stresses and strains that the preparation and the match entails. They've got through it. They've kept their noses in the lead. They have got victory for the Light Blues. Big thanks to Rachel Burford alongside me. Absolute pleasure once again to cover the Varsity with a World Cup winner. I've been Simon Ward. Thank you for your company wherever you are in the world. For now, the bragging rights are all light blue in the Varsity world. <laughs>